Hello guys. So this video is going to be pretty short. In this video, we are going to go over the three uh, retrieval methods that are available at our disposal. Um, so uh, the first method and the second method, you know, we've already seen it here and there the past few videos. We're just going to bring it together. So it's going to be pretty simple. So all that we're doing is, okay, we are pointing the persistent directory to what we've already created. And we are going to initialize the vector database. And here is going to be the query. How much did Microsoft pay to acquire GitHub? This is a query that we've already seen as well, right? So this is the query and this is going to be method one. Okay, so this method one is going to be a simple similarity search. All that we're going to do is uh, initialize the retriever and set k is equal to three. That is it for uh, similarity search. You know what would happen if we were to run this, we are going to get the top three or five chunks. And this is something that we have seen in a lot of previous videos. So let's take it up a notch. So uh, I'm just going to comment it out. The second method is going to be, uh, the second method is going to be similarity with score threshold. Okay, so this is also, we briefly saw this particular type uh, in one video in the past. So all that we're going to do is set the type to similarity score threshold. So basically this setting, this type is going to allow us to add this new property right here, this new attribute right here called score threshold. So if we set it to 0.3, for instance, we are only going to be getting chunks with similarity scores greater than 0.3. Okay, so there is going to be a disadvantage with the first method. So let's say the user is asking a query uh, where you know the, the query has absolutely nothing with the documents that are in the vector store. Okay, so in that case, you know what would happen? Let's comment it out. Okay, I'm just going to give you a small example. So let's uncomment this and Let's say the query is going to be something absurd, right? Okay, so the query is going to be how how do you plant tomatoes in a garden, right? So in this case, uh, if with method one, it is still going to fetch us three different chunks. And the reason why is that we are not setting any threshold right here. So even if the retrieved chunks similarity score is very close to zero, it could be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, if it's any of that, still it is going to retrieve it, but we know that it is not going to be useful for us at all. So let me show you what I mean. So if I go ahead and run this, okay, so you know that the query is uh, something about potatoes, but you can see we're still getting some, uh, you know, some values right here, right? They don't talk about potatoes, right? They're talking about uh, Tesla and they're talking about Google and, you know, a Google screen initiative, right? So this is exactly why we can go ahead and set a similarity score right here. So what we can do is we can just set it to 0.3. That is the sweet spot that I have seen. If I increase it to let's say 0 0.7, 0 0.8, I risk not getting any chunks at all, even if the chunks are qualified. If I go uh, lower than that, if I go 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, I start getting irrelevant chunks. So 0 0.3 seems to be the right value for me. So if I go ahead and now run this, Ideally, we should not get any chunks. Okay, so you can actually see that no relevant docs were retrieved. So if I were to decrease it even further, probably I'd be able to get it. So let's say I just make it to 0.0. .0. In that case, we will probably get something. So you can see that we are getting three different chunks. They're all irrelevant. The similarity scores would be very, very less, but still we are getting it because we've set the similarity score to be very, very less. So let's move it to 0.3. So that is it for similarity score threshold. Let's move on to the next one. So method three is going to be about maximum marginal relevance. So essentially we are, we are going to use this method where we want to balance relevance and diversity. It avoids redundant results. So let's actually take a minute, understand this in depth and come back to the code. So here is a problem that MMR solves. So imagine you ask, tell me about Python programming. So in this case, regular similarity search might return Python is a programming language as the first chunk. Python is a popular programming language in the second chunk. Python programming language is widely used in the third chunk. So the problem with this approach is all three documents are basically saying the same thing. So we are getting redundant repeated information. So if all the chunks that are retrieved are going to be very close to each other in similarity scores, they talk about very similar things. In that case, it would actually be beneficial if the chunks are a little different from each other. So the LLM has more context to work with, right? So let's see how MMR solves for this, how MMR works. MMR uses a two-step process. First, it finds chunks relevant to your query. 
like normal similarity. And then, among those relevant chunks, it picks the most diverse ones. It's like having a smart assistant that says, I found 20 articles about Python, but instead of giving you the three most similar ones, let me give you three different aspects. One about syntax, one about applications, and one about libraries. So the formula for MMR is as follows. MMR balances two competing goals. One is relevance, meaning how well does this chunk answer the query? And diversity, how different is this chunk from what I've already selected? So if we come back, so right here you can see that I've initialized the retriever. I've set the search type to MMR. So let's look at this particular part. So k is equal to 3 is what is going to be the final number of chunks that we are going to retrieve. And let's look at the next thing. We have fetch k is equal to 10. What this means is this is going to be the initial pool to select from. So this retriever is going to retrieve 10 chunks initially and then it is going to choose 3 out of it. By what condition is it going to choose the 3? It is going to be based on this lambda parameter which is right now set to 0.5 which is going to be right in the middle between diversity and relevance. Okay, so if we were to set it to zero, in that case, it is going to choose the maximum diversity. Uh, it's going to be having very less relevance to the query. If we set it to one, it's going to be completely relevant, but it's not going to have any diversity. So that is why we are going to go somewhere right in the middle. So let's go ahead and run it. So let me show you the difference. So I'm just going to uncomment these basic similarity search comment this out and let's actually look at the chunks and then see if there's going to be any difference. So we know that this is going to be the query. Uh, you know, how much did Microsoft pay to acquire GitHub? So if we see right here, Microsoft to acquire GitHub for, okay, so this first chunk answers the user's question. The second chunk also probably would answer the user's question. So Microsoft officially announced the acquisition of GitHub for 7.5 billion, right? So document two also talks about the same thing. Document three also talks about the same thing. So even though all the three chunks have the answer to the question, this could sometimes be a disadvantage as we just saw. So let's actually now try the MMR. Let's come down here and then uncomment this part right here. So let's go ahead and run it. Let's see what we get. Now, so it's the same query that we're dealing with. In the document one, you can see that, okay, so first chunk actually has high relevance to the query. Let's look at the next one. So right here, we don't actually see uh, any mention of GitHub right here. So let's see what is happening right here. So uh, Microsoft acquired Nokia's devices. So this is amazing, right? So we actually have the answer to the user's question in the first chunk. And now the MMR is going to look at some diverse things. So it is actually, uh, you know, collecting information about other companies that Microsoft, uh, you know, bought, purchased, so that the LLM has more context about, you know, what is happening outside of the, uh, the user's question alone. And if we look at document three, it also has some information about the finances of Microsoft. So this is going to be the idea. Sometimes we might want pure relevance, uh, relevant chunks. Sometimes we might, we might want a mix of relevant as well as diverse chunks. So let's look at when to use MMR. So we can use MMR when your documents might have overlapping content. And we can use MMR when we want a well-rounded answer covering different aspects. And we can also use it when we're doing research and want diverse perspectives. We don't want to use MMR when you want the absolute most relevant results. Your chunks are already quite diverse. And also speed is critical because MMR can be a little slow. So that is it for the different types of retrieval methods. In the next video, we are going to look at a very popular technique that is going to increase your RAG accuracy 10x. In the next video, let's look at the multi-query retrieval method. I will see you in the next video.